All right. In uh, today's lesson, we are going to uh, throw it back a little bit. We're going to do some background work for our new unit. So we're going to go back to section 3.9 and we're going to do a little bit of review and then also take it to the kind of the next level. So today is a little conceptual, but also a little algebra. So don't worry. And today we're going to actually have two parts to this. So this is video number one to go with your homework. And this is called tangent line approximation. So we're going to go back to finding the tangent line and then take it a step further. So I know we haven't done this in a while. So I wanted to go over how to find the tangent line of an equation and then also show you a new way to find the tangent line of an equation that is going to be what we will use for today, or it'll develop into what we're using for today. All right, so um, let's do a review question on finding the equation of a tangent line. So recall that you might have, you have an equation. So we're gonna go with our function of y equals x to the fourth minus three x squared plus two. And that um, they'll ask you to find the tangent line at a certain point. So we are gonna find this tangent line at point one comma zero. Okay, so if you recall to find the equation of the tangent line, we use the derivative. So first step would be we need to find the derivative of this function. So if you recall, we use the power rule. So derivative or y prime equals then four times x to the third and then minus six x, multiply the two by the three and then the constant is a zero. So then remember our goal to find the equation of the tangent line is we need y equals mx plus b and we need our m and our b because it's a line. All right, and so first thing we do is we find the slope. And so to find the slope is we evaluate the derivative with, at this point. So we find the derivative and then we plug in our x, which is one. So we're gonna plug in one into this point. And so we'll have four times one minus six times one, which gives us a negative two. So this value, if you recall, I know it's been a while, this is our slope or this is our M, okay? So just to recap this again, take the derivative, evaluate the derivative at um, your X value of what you're looking for, and that is negative two, so that is our M. So we know our M here. So I'm just gonna take this out. We know our M is negative two. Now we need to find B. So previously we had done this. We knew that we had an X and a Y. So we plugged those values in with our M. So our Y was zero, M was negative two times our X, which is one plus B. And then we solved for B. And so we got B, we'd add the two over and we got B is two. So the equation of our tangent line would be Y equals negative two M plus B. I mean, plus two, not B, because we just found B, so plus two. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a new equation to use called point slope form. And maybe you've seen this before, maybe use it in uh, pre-calc, not sure. But here's our point, point slope form. And we're gonna get the same answer, but I'm just gonna show you this because we need this to use, it's gonna develop into our tangent line approximations. So here is the point slope formula. And we can do the same thing that we just did, or we'll get the same answer by doing this plugin. Okay, so in this plugin, our X1 and our Y1 represent the original X and Y that they gave us. So this is our X1 and our Y1, and we have our slope is negative two. So we still have to find the derivative, but we're gonna use a different method besides what I did here and use this equation instead. Okay, so the Y stays. We're gonna plug in our y1, which is zero. So it'll be minus zero equals our slope of negative two, which is m times x minus our x value, x1 value, which is one. And then all we have to do is just distribute this negative two, that zero cancels. So y equals negative, oops, negative two x plus two. Okay, so notice here that regardless, oops, that's an X over there too. So regardless, these are the same equations, whether we use the slope intercept or we use the point slope formula. 
But I want you to keep this point so formula in mind because this is going to be what we are going to do um, with our problems. Okay, so we are going to do tangent line approximations next, which we're going to use this, but I want to kind of explain what a tangent line approximation is. So keep this in mind here. I'm going to switch over to Desmos. So let me stop my screen share here. Let me share with the Desmos graphing calculator. Okay, so if you notice here, um, these are the two functions. So what I just did was I graphed the function that we just did an example of, and then I graphed the tangent line. So what is a tangent line approximation? Because we just found the tangent line, but what does it mean to approximate? And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the tangent line to approximate a value of the function that is really close to the point of tangency. I'll say that again. We are going to use the tangent line, the green line, or the negative 2x plus 2, to find a value on this function that is really close to this point of tangency, but is not the point of tangency. So let me explain why. Here, if we look at our tangent, remember the tangent function touches the graph at one point. If I were to zoom in on this, as I zoom in, you can see that the point of tangency, this almost is the exact, it's almost like the same line from, what is this, like 0.95 to 1.05. So it's almost the exact same line. So if we study the behavior of what is happening around this tangent line, we could use the tangent line to help us find the value of a function on the blue. And then we don't have to use the function, if that makes sense. The reason is sometimes there is very complicated functions. Like this isn't a very complicated function, to be honest. But if you had, you know how you guys love the trig functions, or you have a really crazy square root or cube root or something to the four eighths, no, four, like four sevenths power, something crazy. Having to do approximate values of a crazy function is tough, but the tangent line makes it easier. Okay, so we're going to be using this tangent line here to find a value that's really close to the function, but not the actual tangent function. Okay, so watch. Hopefully that will all come together in a moment. So I'm going to stop share here, go back to my whiteboard, and we're going to develop this equation that we're going to use. Okay, so let's um, talk about this equation. So I'm going to go back to our um, slope intercept formula. So here is our slope intercept formula. If you want to title it that, you are more than welcome to. And then it is m of x minus x1. All right. So in a problem, what they're going to do is the same thing. They are going to find, they're going to ask you to approximate or to find the tangent line at a particular point of a function. That'll be your first job. So we're going to rename some of these things. So for example, let's say um, like our X value is what they, what they say your X value is, is they say your X value is C. So whatever they give you to plug in to the formula. So if I go back to this problem, my X value is one here, my X one is really um, one, which is my C. So one is my C in this situation, okay? So I'm gonna go back here to the screen. So X one really represents the C. It's the constant of whatever they're asking you to approximate at um, the tangent line, okay? So if you wanna write that down, X one is where is C is the X value they ask you to evaluate the function at, okay, or the tangent line at. Okay, so then that means you have to find what the y is because they are not going to give you the y. So how do you find the y? Well, you take the x value and you plug it into the function, right? So that means your y value, okay, follow me here on this, your y value, which is y1, is going to be whatever the function is evaluated at C. Okay, so C again, C is what they're giving you. And then you have to take your X value, plug it in. So plug it into the function and that will give you Y. Okay, so if we come back to this example, 
if I were to take one and plug it in to here, so take my this, I would be so I'd be plugging in f of one into my original function. That's one minus three plus two, and I get zero. Okay, which they used to give us. They're not going to give us that anymore. Okay, so my f of one is zero, or basically my y. Okay, I'm going somewhere with this, so just hold on. Okay, hold on. All right, so then the other thing that you need in this formula, so we have our x1, we have our y1. The other thing you need is your slope. Okay, your slope. How did we get the slope before in the previous problem? So in this previous problem, remember the first thing we did was we found the derivative and then we evaluated the derivative at our x value. So remember, we said our x value is our c. So really we are evaluating the derivative, we're evaluating the derivative here of one, which is our C, okay? So back here, the slope is actually us finding the derivative and evaluating the derivative at C. Okay, so just to recap, the X one, that is the constant that they are going to give you in the problem they're asking you to use to find the tangent line. The Y one, I will put the Y one here for you so you can see the Y one value is giving you, the Y one value gives you the function value at C or at X. So whatever your X value is that they give you in the problem. And then your slope is whatever, or the M, okay, the M is the value of the derivative at C or at the X equals value. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Your X value that they give you is your C. Y1 is your F of C and your m your slope is your derivative of the function at c so what we're going to do here is we're going to take these and we're going to plug these in to our formula so we're going to take these values and we are going to replace them take these values and we're going to replace them over here so here's what it's going to look like my y stays minus my y1 is now f of c My M is my function derivative at C. My X stays. And then my X1 is my C. So X minus C goes in the parentheses. Now, if I solve for Y, I would add the function evaluated at C or my Y value over to the other side. And this is the formula that we are going to use to approximate tangent values. So your final equation that we are gonna use, this is the big hitter right here, is that y equals, we put this one first for some reason. So it equals the function evaluated at C plus the derivative evaluated at C times X minus C. Okay, so this is the function that we are going to use to solve the next two problems. Okay, so get that copy down and then we're gonna move over to two um, example problems before I show you your homework. Okay, I know it seemed like a lot, but I wanted you to understand where this formula was coming from. I didn't wanna just throw a formula and be like, here, we're gonna do this. I wanted you to understand that this formula is coming from the point slope formula of the tangent line. Okay, so now we're still in in theory, everyone, we are still finding the tangent line, but then we are going to use the tangent line to find a value of the function. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Moving on to example number one. Here we go. So my suggestion is for sure that you write down that formula. We'll need that in a second. But here is going to be our first problem. So we are going to let's put in a text. Here's what they're gonna ask you to do. They're gonna to say to find the tangent line of the given function at the given point 
and then approximate its value at, and then they're gonna give you something. So I'm gonna give you this. All right, so we need a function and we need um, a given point. So our function is going to be, uh, okay, we're gonna go with something simple to start. So our function is going to be just uh, 3x squared. And then we are going to approximate that function when x equals one. Okay, so now we have some crazy things happening here, right? We got a crazy equation we're gonna use, um, which is y equals, I'm gonna write that down in here, y equals f of c. Mm. So f of c plus the derivative at c, so f prime of c times c, or sorry, x minus c, x minus c. Okay, so we need to find all of these, basically we're finding all the values except for the x. So we need to find our, what is my f of c? I need to find my derivative of c and then identify my c. Okay, so hopefully you're re recalling that I said several times, your x is your c. So we're gonna identify what all of these things are. We need c, we need f of c, and then we need the derivative of f at c. Okay, so we're gonna identify all three of those things and then we're gonna plug them in. Okay, so that would be my first step if you wanted to write steps down is that we need to find all three of these things. The second step would be take those three things and plug them in to this formula over here. Okay, let's start with this. So my C is one, my, your C is your X. Your C is your X value for the tangent line that they want you to find. Okay, do you remember what F of C was? F of C was we're taking the function and plugging it in at the value of C, which is one. So we're gonna take the function, so it'll be the function at one, which is just, so that would be three times one squared, which is just three. Okay, so F of C is three. Now, just keep in mind, remember this F of C is really your Y. Okay, this is really your Y value. So your coordinate really is one comma three here. Okay, now we need the derivative at C. So we need to find the derivative first of this function. So the derivative of this function would be six X. So now we need to evaluate this function at C or evaluate this derivative function at X equals one. So we'll plug in a one. So six times one equals six. Okay, so now I have my three values that I'm gonna take and plug into this function to find my tangent line. So I have Y equals my F of C, which is my Y. So that's three plus my derivative of C, which is, remember your slope, really that's your M. So I'm gonna plug that in as six times the X stays minus C, which is one. Okay, then all I have to do is just simplify. So I'll multiply that through Y equals three plus six X minus six. And then combine my like terms and I get Y equals six X minus three. Okay. So this is just a different way to find the tangent line. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to do two things. We're gonna approximate its value at 0 0.9, but then I'm gonna explain why we are doing this and show you how close it is to the actual value. Okay, so approximating its value at 0 0.9 means we're gonna take 0 0.9 and we're gonna plug it into the tangent line. So we're gonna take 0 0.9 and plug it in down here to the tangent line. So six times 0 0.9 minus three. Okay, if you were to plug that in, you can check me just to make sure. Six times 0 0.9 minus three is gonna give you 2.4. All right, now, why do we do that? What is the point of this? 
Okay, let's go, um, let's now, let's approximate, let's take the 0 0.9 and let's plug it into the actual function and see what happens. So I'm gonna plug this in now, the 0 0.9 into the actual function. So I'm gonna go three times 0 0.9 squared. So I'd have to square my 0 0.9 first, then times by three, go ahead and check my, check my math. And you should get 2.43. 2.43. So what this is showing us is that we can use the tangent line to find a value really close and look how close it is to the actual value of the function at 0.9. So if we use the tangent line, we got 2.4 of the value. At the regular one, we got 2.43. So these are very close to each other. I'm going to show you on the graph in a second. But the point is here is that um, we are going to apply this to real world situations in which I told you where the functions are a little more complicated. And so to do this, using the tangent line is a, a faster, easier method. And it also will help us find the rate of change. Okay, when, I'll get to that in video two. So um, hopefully this makes sense how we do it. Let's just take a quick look at the graph. I'm going to stop my share real quick. Take a quick look at what this graph looks like. And so you can understand what is happening. Okay, let me put these on the graph real quick. So our graph was 3x squared. And then our tangent line that we got was 6x minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in on this, or actually I have to zoom out. Okay, so right here is our tangent line, 1 comma 3. So um, let me go home and then zoom in. Okay, here we are, tangent line. All right, so what we did was when we evaluated at 0 0.9, 0 0.9 is like right here. Let's see if we can zoom out, zoom in. This is not helpful whatsoever, is it? Um, so it is at, what was it? One comma, the tangent line was at one comma, zero oh no one comma three i'm sorry one comma three okay so here's my tangent line right there okay approximation right there so if i evaluated at 0 0.9 that is like right here and so as i zoom in on it okay 0 0.9 is right here so it gives me this approximation of 2.4 so it's like super close to it and if I actually look at the function, it's just a little bit off. There's like a margin of error right in there. So I approximated it at the blue and at the black. And so it's a little bit under because the actual value of the function is 2.43, but we evaluated 2.4. So that means the margin of error is a positive or a, yeah, a negative, sorry, because we underestimated of 0 0.03. Okay, so again, we're using the tangent line to figure out the value of the function at a particular point. That is not the tangent. Okay, let's do one more example. Um, I can explain more of this in depth for our, um, for as far as the graph is concerned, I'll do that more in class when we come together. All right, let's do one more example so you understand what is happening, and then I will show you your homework. All right, so example two. All right, so we are going to approximate the tangent line. I'm not going to rewrite all the directions, but we're going to approximate, or we're going to find the tangent line and then use that to approximate a value. So here's going to be our function. We're going to use f of x equals the square root of x. And we're going to, we're going to find the tangent line at x equals 1. And then we're going to use that information to evaluate the tangent line, approximate the tangent line at 1.5. Okay, so I would suggest, again, whatever you would like to do, I always like to write the formula down first so I know what I'm getting myself into, what I need to find. So y equals the function at c plus the derivative of the function at c times x minus c. 
Okay. So again, I would go to my first step is I would evaluate the three things that we need. We need our constant. We need our X. We need the function at that constant or at the X. And then we need the derivative of the function at that X. Okay. So remember your X value is where you're finding the tangent line at. Okay. So that's going to be my C or my one. And then to find your f of c, you're going to plug the one into your function. So we are finding the square root of one, which is just one. So the value of the function at c, or remember this is our y, is one. Then lastly is we need to find the um, derivative of this function. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to change this into a, an exponential or into a, um, have an exponent. So x to the one half. And then if you remember the derivative of that is X to the three halves, I'm, I'm sorry, we multiply, I'm doing the integral here. We multiply by one half. Um, so it'll be one over um, two, and then we subtract one. So it'll be X to the negative one half. So multiply by the coefficient, subtract one. Remember the exponent means that it's going to come to the bottom. So X is gonna to come to the bottom. And then if it's to the one half at the bottom, it'll be two square root of X at the bottom. So this is the derivative of our function. And now we need to evaluate this derivative at my C value of one. So that means it'll be one over two square root of one, which is just two. So my F of C is one half. So now I'm gonna take these values and I'm gonna plug those three values into my this is my tangent line approximation formula, tangent line approximation formula. So Y equals my F of C is one. That's over here. My derivative at C is one half. So I'll put that here. And then my C is one, so I'll put that here. All right, now just use algebra and solve. So I'll get Y equals one plus one half X. Minus one half. And then combine like terms, I'll get Y equals um, one half X plus one half. Okay, so this is my tangent line. Now, next step, so step one, find these three values. Step two, plug it in, find the tangent line. Step three, plug in the tangent line approximation number into the tangent line formula or the tangent line equation that we found. So if I plug that in, I'll have Y equals one half times 1.5 plus one half. And I should get, y equals 1.25. You can go ahead and check that to make sure I'm correct. All right, and then last but not least, I would like you to go ahead and just check this value, like plug it into the function as well to see what happens, to see how close we are to find that margin of error. So now we're gonna plug this into the original. And if you do the square root of 1.5, you are going to get 1.22. Okay, so this time our tangent line approximation is higher than what the actual value is. So it would be a 0 0.3 mar positive um, margin of error because that is how far away it is from the actual value. All right, I'm going to stop share and throw the, um, the problems on. And so you can use, um, or you can take a screenshot if you want to or pause the video in order to write these down. Okay, so we're gonna screen share this. Okay, here are your, all right. Here are your homework problems for part one. I will increase a little bit here on your, so you can see it better. Okay, so you have four problems. You're doing exactly what we just did following those steps. And you can screenshot this or pause and, um, copy them down. All right. Let me know if you have any questions.